Here's another in our series on renewable energy, and here I'd like to talk about biomass. So first, let me define what I mean. So the sun's energy, when it hits the Earth, does all kinds of magical things. It, it provides us with this kind of warm, happy uh, environment, this climate that we like so much. It keeps all of us alive, and as we've talked about uh, at other elements of this series, there are um, different forms of renewable energy that actually derive directly from the sun's uh, incident energy on the Earth. Um, so here, biomass is simply a different flavor of this when you think about it. So in addition to all this magical stuff that happens on the surface of the Earth when the sun hits it, one thing is that it create, it makes life possible. It, 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 for instance, grows plants, animals eat the plants, um, all of the organic material that's available um, on this planet is, is essentially solar energy when you think about it. So now, here we have wood that we can burn, corn that we can grow, we have waste tires. Did you know, for instance, that we have 300 million tires off cars and trucks in the United States alone that are essentially put into landfills? There's a huge amount of biologic energy in those tires, and now all of a sudden people are saying, okay, I want to process to extract that energy and to sell it back as either electricity or as biofuels. And waste tires is one of hundreds and hundreds of different things. So for instance, in a certain portion of the United States, there's 14 tons a year of demolition waste. They, when they tear down buildings, there's all this, of this waste, 30% of it is wood. So we don't want that wood in a landfill when there's so much energy there. So we want ways of extracting that. So, what to like about biomass is this is, first of all, this is carbon neutral. This is not like, for instance, taking a fossil fuel out of the ground, ripping the top off a mountain, or, or fracking, or uh, drilling and extracting oil, uh, and then burning that oil and emitting uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere with no mechanism to pull it back. So, for instance, the tree, while it's growing, is absorbing carbon dioxide, here, yes, we're burning it, but we're essentially returning that carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere from which it came. So here's, here's what not to like about biomass, is that personally, I find the chemistry of this a little bit daunting. I think anybody, uh, a school-age kid, can figure out what, why the wind blows, and that's, you know, that's elementary science that anybody can understand. I, I challenge uh, most people watching this to figure out the, the actual chemistry and all the, the internal guts of the way most of these advanced bio uh, mass plants work. It's extremely complicated and it's also not black and white. Somebody can say um, some, some process might work for a certain feedstock but not for another and we, we, we're having trouble figuring out why. So this is rapidly evolving, the costs are falling, the efficiencies are rising, um, we all talk about algae. Algae is an important feedstock. In other words, we're, what we're putting into this thing. So, but it's only one of many. There are many. There, there are hundreds of, of different um, types of feedstock, and therefore we need hundreds of different processes for maximizing our ability to extract that energy and turn it into something useful. So, biomass is a fantastically interesting thing that's going to have a big part in the future.